Yes, 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 who got brands talking? Brandlife.co.za Hello and welcome to Creative Ghettos, the show that looks at the people who push forward various creative industries. With a focus on Africa, I will spend 30 minutes each week unveiling excellent and exciting progress within creative industries, including visual art, architecture, design, food, film, publishing and technology. My name is Guanele Kunene and I'll be your host every Friday right here on brandlive.co.za. Today on Creative Ghettos, I speak to two very young and brilliant chefs, Tando Koza and Barney Jerry, have had fun and interesting journeys to becoming culinary professionals. We'll chat about their histories, unpack the challenges and rewards of taking the foodie route, as well as find out about their brainchild, Royal Era Events. Barney and Tando, welcome to Creative Ghettos. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Such an absolute pleasure to be here in the studio. This is our first interview in 2018, so we're really excited I about mean, you're that. doing well. It's the second week. It's only the second week second now week. of yeah. January, yeah. and already you're booking um, radio interviews yeah, and other interviews. You know, I can just imagine. Yeah, it's really, it's really interesting. We're really excited about this year. have big plans. Well, I mean, so moving forward, I, um, the the whole whole conversation will be about food and culinary arts that is the creative ghetto or mm-hmm. creative industry that we'll be focusing on this week and because you two are qualified chefs mm-hmm. and very young we want to just start out about start with what drove you to wanting to cook professionally Tanda, you can go first um when i was young actually uh i always used to be in the kitchen you know make your mashes and i don't know your borovoses and stuff so mm. I found it really interesting and, you know, I wanted to pursue it as I did um, little cooks in primary school. Little cooks? What's that? It's like hospitality management. Oh, you had that in primary school. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we did that and I found it really interesting. Yeah. And I was like, you know what, I need to do this because I'm a love of food and mm. I need to pursue my dream in becoming a chef. And and Barney, you? Well, uh, one memory I have, and this is what I always tell people when they ask me about my foodie journey. Yeah. Um, I remember when I was really young, um, I came back from Krish, from, So uh, I found out that my dad had put uh, a platter of, um, of ingredients on the table. So I had to make my own sandwich from there. Okay. So, okay, I grew, grew, grade seven. I started experimenting, watching you know, you know, a few food channels mm. and I started making pizza, experimenting in the kitchen, getting into trouble for wasting food in the kitchen. And um, I later on did uh, consumer studies. So we did a lot of cooking there. And that's when I went and studied at inter- the, inter- the International Hotel School, rather, um, which was last year. And you grew up in Zimbabwe? Yes. Um, partly. How, how long did you stay in Zimbabwe for? Um, I studied um, from grade three to grade five. Okay, so two years. Two, two years, yeah. yeah two yeah. years. Uh, it was really, really interesting. The education there, it's just on another level when I, when I came back. Um, and, and how would you say that um, culturally, how they prepare food, how did that influence how you um, prepare your food and, 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 and introduce new ingredients or new flavors into mm-hmm. some of your dishes? Um, in Zimbabwe, there's a lot of um, African vegetables, you know, those like your, your moriwa, moriwa. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Um, but um, you, my aunt used to find ways into, you know, transforming the um, African, African vegetables and mm. infusing it, um, adding a bit of flavor for tomorrow. We don't have the same thing. You understand? Oh, uh, Okay. So it's yeah. the same vegetable every day, different flavors. but then they find different ways exactly. of cooking it. Okay. Classic. Classic. <laughs> I love that. And, and you, Tando, I mean, you, your family, you've got a, quite an interesting <laughs> background. Um, your grandfather is Ivan Koza. Yes, right? he is. So you come from a very sporting background. How on earth? Did you decide, well, you know, this is a safety net going into sports. Yeah. Why? Why was it culinary that was very important to you? Apart from the interest, but what did you think you could add into the industry? 
Well, because both my parents uh, were in the soccer industry, I just thought to myself, you know, I want to be different. Mm. So let me do something different that's going to benefit them in their own business. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, culinary is my way and I want to do it and I can cook for them, for the players or whoever. Yeah. And it's going to be great and I'll be known for just being tando, not... Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. No, I, I completely get that because you also want to make your own stamp yeah. exactly. um, in the world. Okay, so 2018 just started, mm -hmm. and of course, there are people who are looking to follow a similar journey to the both of you yes. people, first year specifically. Mm -hmm. What are some of the challenges that you have faced and that you can impart with someone who may be listening right now um, while you were still studying? The challenges, okay, and, challenges. and yeah, yeah. Okay, first of all, you need to be very disciplined. Um, this industry, it needs discipline in terms of uh, you need to be very punctual. You need to know that you are going to stand the whole day. And those boots <laughs> and the uniform is extremely hard. But um, you need to be dedicated. You need to be creative. You need, you need to research. Mm -hmm. And by doing all those things, you know, you just become better and and you just open up mm. to the whole holistic um, culinary culinary industry. Yeah, yeah. And you, Tanda, what would you say some of the challenges that you faced were w while you were studying? I mean, you know, everybody's got this perspective of cooking is wa fraisha and you're just always frying and stuff. Mm. It's not like that. You need to know your, your animals and all those things mm. and it's really hard so you really need to be focused so there's the science to it there's yeah. a science to it yes and these costing these mats um, so you need to know, <laughs> you know there's a lot of things that you which I suppose you're probably good at at this point yeah yeah <laughs> 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 well, yeah, I know that those are things that are important and a lot of people don't take into consideration. I think the moment you think that you want to be a creative mm. uh, in any creative industry, mm -hmm. really, we neglect to think about cost and mm. finance, the business side of things. Important. Well, for me, this leads me to my next question. Mm -hmm. Money. 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 Yes. How, how do you move from being someone who is in school, mm -hmm. probably getting a grant to go to school mm -hmm. um, your, or your parents are paying and now you have to find a way of standing on your own two feet. And mm -hmm. I know, I mean, you know, getting into the, the industry is not very easy and mm, getting into not. a role that you want to be in is not the easiest thing. How, how did you, you know, how did you f figure out ways of making, generating an income for yourselves? An income for ourselves. Uh, well, mm. uh, we have the skill and with the skill, we we kind of networked and got gotten we're gonna get clients with the with the profit that you're going to we're gonna get we're going to reinvest in our business. So sometimes you we're all not for, fortunate to get um, funding immediately. You know when mm -hmm. you want to start your business, so you have to strategize and work with what you have. So for now we have the skills. We do have a few equipment, which is our knives and things we used um, in culinary school, but. Yeah. We are gonna get. Um, we are putting ourselves out there, yeah. and we are gonna get clients. We are networking. We've gotten a few clients. Mm. So with the money we are gonna make, we are we going to reinvest it in our business. So basically, you guys are still figuring out your way yes, into our foundation. the, the proper yeah. business side of things, where mm -hmm. you are generating a, a uh, proper yes, income, a sustainable. Uh, um, now, would you say, is. Tando, that be, being a, a chef is a profitable career choice? Really, it really comes with you. Um, if you're really passionate about what you're doing yeah. and you know what you want to do for other people, because mm. making food is is about the guest at the end of the day. And whatever the guest says about the food is how they, um, what's the word? Oh gosh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is how they inter interpret you. Okay. So, yeah. But does that not restrict you to a certain extent? No, it just motivates you to work harder and harder so you can be the best. Okay. And, and, and you know, talking about your clients and, and that your client is the, the main the main person who's mm. important throughout whatever it is that you do. How do you convince them? 
that you want to do something completely unheard of, but you trust, like you are trusting yourself <laughs> that it is going to be phenomenal. How do you, how do you um, convince them? Okay, one thing I've learned uh, when you approach a client, mm. um, you need to know your story. And within the first 30 seconds, um, while speaking to them, they will kind of know what type of person you are and what type of person you are in business. So when we approach our clients, uh, yes, we are from culinary school and we don't really have much um, experience, but how we present ourselves and brands mm. um, to them, when we speak to them, we create something so strong that they have to trust us with uh, with the job they're going to give us. Yeah, yeah. So, yes, and we do have pictures. We do this. The wonderful thing about now, um, we have social media. So people do do look at our, f- uh, our food uh, and things we create. So, and they really, I believe they really like uh, our food. What you do. Yeah. 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 But, and, and, and tell me about um, cooking for clients when you're still courting them, when you're still trying to get them to, to buy into what you're selling. Mm-hmm. How does it work? Do you, do they pay? Do they pay you before the, all that happens, or you know, do you just do everything out of your own pockets? Because I can just imagine no. that that would be pretty expensive. True, true. We have we have to get a deposit from our clients mm-hmm. so that we can get the ingredients and travel where we need to go in order to do the job. No, but this is not the job. I'm asking mm-hmm. about um, before you get the job, before the client actually books you. Mm-hmm. Do you have to, you know, pr- uh, uh, um, present whatever it is that you would like to present to them mm-hmm. um, through your own pocket? Or yes. Okay. yes, we have to do that. It's kind of investing in our brand mm. before anybody else invests in your brand. Because if you don't trust your brand so much and invest in your brand, then why would you expect somebody to invest or trust you with your products and services that you rendering to them? Yeah. So we do, we do do that. Okay. Yes. And then social media, you just touched on social media mm-hmm. for a second. I want to know besides, you know, getting likes because how do we translate likes into money? Mm, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how does that play to your advantage when it comes to booking actual gigs you, in terms of networking mm. and, and, reaching out to the next person mm-hmm. and, and having them really interested in, in you and what you do. Um, can you please re- re- repeat the question? Please? How does social media play mm-hmm. to your advantage mm-hmm. when it comes to booking gigs? To booking gigs? Basically. Um, people tag people on food <laughs> on, your, on, your, on, your, on your wall. Yeah. And they, they interact with each, with each other like, oh, look what Bunny cooked. Okay. So kind of it's word of mouth. Mm. In, some, in some type of way and th- also through social media. So that's how we get out there. Okay. Yes. And, and you know, social media is like, what, is it, what do they call it? Uh, Celebrity <laughs> centri- yeah. central. So <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it true that most chefs nowadays are looking to be young celebrities um, in terms of, you know, Jamie Oliver did it, mm. Nigella did it, and that, that's S- Sebastian... Not Siba. Siba. <laughs> Siba. 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 Yeah, Siba did it. Um, mm. Is that the goal for 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 most celebrity or well, for most chefs to become celebrities? Does that mm. make it? Does it make it seem as if your your professional choice will be more lucrative once you're known by the masses? Absolutely, absolutely, and that's how you get your clients and how you get exposed. Mm. Um, social media is it can make it can make your career or break you. So in in like on Twitter, you Mm. know, people will retweet what you have created and it might land on your possible client's uh, uh, war. So, yes. uh, Yeah, that's the hope. So for us, um, social plus social media these days, it's it's where you do most of your branding, how you um, carry yourself, uh, carry yourself and your brand, your whole holistic brand and Mm. business or in your, your personal brand. So that's where people would see everything about your brand and everything okay now we go to my favorite section and that is your brainchild mm-hmm. royal era events now that's how you two got together actually that's what i should be finding out mm-hmm. how did you guys meet what's the story that led to the meeting the royal era the business the money the mm-hmm. food together tell me about that well we met at school international hotel school um, we were in the same class, so mm-hmm. 
you know, he was always on my case about, you know, food, food, food. And I was always <laughs> on his case about food, food, food. So we're like, you know what? Let's just work on something. Mm -hmm. We were actually walking to McDonald's and like, we need to work on something that's going to benefit mm. us in the future. Yeah. And let's come up with something that's going to be like, wow to people, especially our family and mm. our friends. So they can be like, oh my gosh, these two did it. Because mm -hmm. there's those people at school um, that were like, no, they'll never do it because uh, of this and this and this. But because we were passionate about it and because we believed in ourselves, we trusted ourselves in doing it. Okay. So you guys um, were friends. Yeah. Yes. And and Royal Ever Era events, what is it all about? Because I, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Royal Era events, for now, it's um gourmet catering company. Yum. Yes. And we Yummy. plan... Um, yeah, <laughs> and we plan on branching out um, into having uh, being an agent. So basically, we are going to recruit chefs, and with our huge clientele base, which we we plan on creating, uh, they will obviously ask for for us to come to them. But we're not always going to accommodate everyone. So. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I I love it. I love it. I love it. So um, the, the the game is to. You know, recruit young chefs, you know, mm. passionate chefs. Um, that also creating more revenue for South African chefs because, you know, in South Africa, um, being a chef, you, you don't really get a lot of money like in overseas. So, you know, to be opening up uh, another revenue stream that if a chef um, is, is not working that day, we can book them for our client. Okay, and... I like the I like the idea that you would be recruiting chefs to mm -hmm. to you know go off on their own and, mm -hmm. and do certain jobs because that'll give you guys time to focus on other projects. Yes. And I think that is actually very it's a very, very smart idea. Yes. Um and, and, and what else? So so you would work mostly at events and, and would you do private Yes, we would. We would private events, soccer yeah. events, mm -hmm. um Weddings. <laughs> okay. Yeah, everything that needs food, we are there. And I saw the other day you were cooking for someone, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all know Bobby Mdawung. Yes. How was that? It was... Was that your first time cooking for him? Yes. Yeah, it was actually. And it was, it was hard because, you know, like we don't know what he liked and stuff. So we had to outdo ourselves. Mm. Mm. So... Yeah, we. I think we. I, we outdid ourselves. How many so courses did you did you put together? We prepared uh, three courses. Okay. We prepared three courses. Um, it was a uh, post pay, post um, hake mm -hmm. uh, with um, rockets and um, hollandaise sauce. Okay. Mm. And the second course was a wrapped. Um, it's stuffed garlic and butter wrapped chicken wrapped in bacon with mm. asparagus and spicy chicken tando and uh, spicy corn. She made it. Hey. It, was <laughs> spicy corn. it was amazing. I have to have that. Oh okay. You have, to, you have to try it. It yeah. was so delicious. And of course, the dessert was um, cheesecake with a berry sorbet. Delicious. It was amazing. They really, really liked it. What I'll do is I'll put some of those pictures up yes. on Creative Ghettos, um, the, the website, and I'll put it up on Instagram and Twitter. Mm -hmm. So you can all follow us. Well, you can follow us on uh, Creative Ghettos, at Creative Ghettos on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. Right now, we're going to take a short break. Uh, make sure you keep listening to find out more about Chef Tando Koza and the Purple Chef. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Brandlive.co.za In your face, all over the place. We're online 24 7. 24 7. You're listening to the hottest internet station. Brand Live. No doubt. <laughs> Have you ever thought about the power of social media? Social media has the power to make your business grow. Grow! Yeah. Why don't you let us manage your social media? Because our business is to see your business grow. Visit us at www.beastalmedia.co.za. You're listening to brandlive.co.za. 
Welcome back to Creative Ghettos. My name is Gwane Lugunene and today we're talking about the culinary arts with two very young chefs, Tando Koza and Barney Jiri, aka... The purple shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love your name. I just Thank I have to, so I even wore a purple shirt, yeah. which I burnt. <laughs> Can I tell you I burnt it yesterday really? while I was, yeah, I suck at ironing, so mm-hmm. that should be another creative another, industry. How to iron. How to iron. So what I want to find out is so far, I mean you've been in the game for only a few minutes, really. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what have been your greatest moments? You know, greatest moments are created even in the first minute. Actually, cooking for uh, Mr. Bobby Mdawung, it's such an honor, you know, cooking for a person like that, you know, and it's it's not a lot of people get an, or chefs get an opportunity to, you know, cook or network with that type of uh, status. Mm. Yeah, so mm. that so far in 2017, in 2018 rather, mm. and of course this interview. <laughs> <laughs> the I week. absolutely uh, love you. <laughs> And you, Tando, what can you say have been your greatest moments so far? Not just this year, but, you know. Yeah. Well, being in the culinary space and uh, learning everything about the culinary arts program, mm. it's honestly really interesting. And, you know, one would think you go to the kitchen and you just try and then you're done. Mm. Mm. But there's a lot to that. There's and to we, we learned a lot and I can do a lot more now because I used to cook, but now I can cook better. Now Slay. you flay them. Now you flay them. <laughs> I know, do all these steaming things that you see on TV. Yeah. And it's just awesome to watch. But isn't it phenomenal, though, how TV has played such a huge role in, mm. in educating most people? I mean, I know nothing about cooking, mm. but I can. There, there are certain things where I see them on television, and if I see them enough, I even expect a dish to taste mm. a specific mm. way. Mm. So do you feel television, to an extent, has given you a lot of education? True. True. In refining has. your skills and even your palate? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, in all honesty, a guest or a person would normally look with their mm. eyes uh, for the food and mm. with your, they, they, they smell, the sense of smell, and then obviously with your mouth. Mm. Mm. So that combines everything. Combined, yes. We eat with our eyes on TV. That's why it tastes, you know, you yeah. just think that, oh, it's bacon. I'm also feeling like, because yeah. you know the taste of bacon. Yeah. So, you or know. pancetta. Yeah. Pancetta, pancetta mm-hmm. darling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I now I want to know, if you had to live in any three African countries, mm-hmm. purely based on the food, the food culture there, mm-hmm. where would you go? I would go to Nigeria. Oh, okay. Because I love jollof rice. It's mm-hmm. it's one of the best African cuisines I've eaten. That's West African, uh, West African yeah. though, right? No. Mm-hmm. Because Ghanaians also eat jollof. Yeah, jollof rice. Yes, yeah. yes. There's different types of uh, jollof rice, but the one I tasted was Nigerian. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you for schooling me. Okay, so Nigeria and is there any other country? Um... That's all. And South Africa. Okay. Simply South Africa because of we have so much cultures and so so much cultures mm. and you know, we have twelve languages, you know, these your Afrikaans, point. your cook sisters, yeah. your Kosa, your you know, Iputu, you have, you know, all these um this diversity of languages and cultures which we are fortunate as uh, South Africans to actually taste. Uh, Very you know, good point. Yeah. And you Tando, any three African countries? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, uh, I think I'd go to. I think I'd go to Mozambique. Yeah, because I love spicy food. Actually, okay, and and fish. Yeah, mm. I suppose I'm a, I'm a fishy eater. Yeah, <laughs> She's a fish okay. Lover. So a spicy food. Are you creating your own yes. hot sauce in my bag? <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> people are always complaining. Oh, Tano, your food is always so spicy. Mm. Yeah, but like. That's how I love my food and like I feel like I add value to my hotness of mm-hmm. my food. That's why her spicy corn was that delicious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have got I got to I've got to get on in on this uh, spicy mm. corn. All right. Now just finally to wrap up, mm-hmm. let us know where can where can people find Royal Air events? How can they contact you? Mm-hmm. And also, you know, sell yourself Instagram. Where can mm-hmm. people find you and follow you? See what you're doing throughout the year. 
Okay, for now, you can still get us on our personal accounts mm. uh, due to the royal era. We haven't put it out on social media yet due yeah. to the type of market we want to attract. So we're re- really working on branding and branding is really important mm. to to us. So uh, for me, you can get me on Instagram and on Twitter. I'm not on Facebook uh, at Barney underscore Barney, the purple dinosaur spelling yeah, yeah. <laughs> people say b-u-n-n-y b you yeah. know all these different spellings yeah. but it's b-a-r-n-e-y underscore jerry j-i-r-i on all social media platforms okay so twitter and instagram twitter and instagram Tando? and then on instagram i'm Tando k underscore two mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then on twitter i'm Tando underscore cosa two two okay and then well, facebook Tando cosa Oh, you also on Facebook. Yeah. So all three. Yeah. Great. Thank you guys. Thank you, Tando Thank and you. Barney, for joining us and being such incredible guests. Thank you so and much. And being the Thank first to be us. interviewed yeah. on yeah. Creative yeah. Ghettos. All right. So to find out more about what's happening within Africa's creative industries, make sure you follow Creative Ghettos on Instagram and Twitter at Creative Ghettos. My name is Kwane Lugonene. Join me again next Friday from 2 to 2.30 p.m. for another impactful show. Bye for now. Thank you.